in the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always. Welcome to another edition of what I call the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. I am the gatekeeper or the host of this program. Known here on social media, wherever you may find me, I am known as the mighty, mighty, mighty Angel Snub Nub 7. I am also your soul brother number one. Well, how do we want to start? And uh, before we begin, I want to apologize because I'm in a uh, high traffic situation and I must pay more attention to what I'm doing than running my mouth. Paying attention to what I'm doing here is top priority. We're moving slow in a, in a jam, so I think I can do a little something something. How many of you are familiar with Black News 102, Sonetta Studios? Now, I have been around longer than Sonetta Studios, Black News 102. I was one of the first, I'm not going to say a pioneer, because YouTube was first introduced in 2005. I did not come to the platform till late 2007. So I'm one of the first. There were others, but also I think at that time, as far as subscriptions and so-called popularity or whatever, I think I was at the top of the heap until YouTube began to terminate my channels. Myself and another brother, King Noble, a brother, JT Riley One. There was another brother called a Wise Nubian. At that time, we were in the position like Tariq Nasheed or Sarnetta TV or Hassan Campbell and all of us had our channels destroyed by YouTube which raises a question why was it necessary to destroy our channels but Sarnetta TV is allowed to flourish the Advice Show TV is allowed to flourish. Nation of Islam, the Moors. Why are these channels allowed to flourish? And some are targeted for termination. They hate me so bad, I could not make a second channel. They tear that down, third channel, fourth channel. Over 100 channels terminated. Why is it so necessary to silence Angel Snub Nub 7? Now, going back to Sarnetta TV, Sarnetta TV or Black News 102 used to be. Black News 101 until some conflict that uh, Sarnetta had 
with the person cause his original channel to be terminated not terminated by the white man a negro false flag his channel and then he allowed his same guy that he accused of false flagging his channel he allows this guy to come on his platform well it's all about money because Sinetta himself cannot produce content not really so he brings all these self-made scholars to his platform so y'all can go listen to all this high wisdom and scholarship and knowledge and supreme wisdom no different than going to church you might as well stay with pink Jesus it's the same stuff the only thing you did was get rid of pink Jesus and replace it with Kimmy or some blackity black stuff you're doing the same thing A long time ago, maybe a few years ago, I thought Sarnetta was not a non-biased. I thought he just liked conversation, ideas, people being able to debate different various ideas or whatever. But Sarnetta has an agenda. And his agenda is the usual pro-black, pan-African garbage. Black conscious garbage. Loser, incompetent garbage. Sonetta brags about, I'm real. I was with Dr. Khalid Muhammad. Well, I wasn't directly with Dr. Khalid Muhammad, but I was under Farrakhan when Dr. Khalid Muhammad was brother, uh, what was his, uh, what was his name, brother, uh, I forgot what brother Khalid is, Harold, brother Harold X, he was the minister 27 in Los Angeles, I used to go to, uh, when I was driving a truck in the 80s, I used to go to that temple on the weekends and hang out. So he was brother Harold X at the time. I didn't know who Khalid Muhammad was. Peace to you, twin. I didn't know who I didn't know who Khalid Muhammad was. I I wasn't around when Farrakhan changed his name to uh, Khalid Muhammad. I'm real. I was with Khalid Muhammad. What did you accomplish? That's the question. See, some of y'all are satisfied with talk. And talk and feel good rhetoric, selling false hopes and dreams and making people feel good, you are satisfied with that. So, what did you, being real, sir, with the great Khalid Muhammad, what did y'all accomplish except pretty speeches and television interviews and stuff like that? I know that Khalid Muhammad copied the uh, Million Man March idea, the Million Youth March in 2001, was it? Something like that. Besides that, what did you do? You keeping it real. You with the great Khalid Muhammad. What did y'all do? What did Khalid Muhammad really do? Khalid Muhammad never got over Farrakhan. He was still influenced by Farrakhan. He doing all that talk. And he's still brown-nosing a Negro. My 
my father. I, I loved him. I love it, Farrakhan. Farrakhan don't give a damn about you no more. Farrakhan did not even acknowledge his death. He sent no condolence. He didn't give a damn about you. Like Hassan Kamal said, what kind of man? If somebody show me they don't give a damn about me, what kind of man gonna keep brown nosing a sucker? Cause you, cause Kali Muhammad still caught up in all that divine religion garbage. Farrakhan dumped you, go on about your business. He couldn't let it go. Just like Malcolm X. Malcolm X should have just let it go. Oh, I apologize, your holy apostle. I did wrong. You did nothing wrong, brother. But that's what happens when you caught up in that brainwashing, that cult behavior. The hell with Elijah Muhammad. The hell with Farrakhan. The hell with them people. They didn't do a damn thing for you, Khalid. They didn't do a damn th thing for you, Malcolm. The only thing they did was take from you, use you. And as soon as you couldn't be used no more, they threw you, threw you away like toilet paper. That's what happens in the black conscious community. Pro-black, black first, RBG nation, a bunch of parasites, a bunch of users. And that's what Sarnetta TV does. He really cannot produce content. So he uses others and brings them under this one umbrella. That's a good sign of unity, I guess. <laughs> I'm going to unionize your talent for my own selfish interest. And so, over the years, you've seen he exploited Syrah Sudan Seti, he exploited Young Pharaoh, he exploited Polite, Ali Muhammad, and the list goes on and on. I even wanted to go and be part of that platform. I asked him, I, no, I did not ask him. I did not ask him, I actually called him. I said, brother, how can I get down with Sarnetta TV? He was an arrogant, nasty person. Like he didn't want to talk to me, which he didn't. It just so happened I called and he had to try to treat me a little decent because they put on this fake facade they love black folks no Frank Gary that's his real name to my knowledge he has not legally changed his name to nothing his name is Frank Gary I'm gonna call him Sonetta he's Frank Gary though I called him and asked him how can I be down? He basically blew me off. Like I told you, these people, I've been on YouTube longer than they have. The noise maker was Angel Snub Nub 7. And the reason why I was able to make noise was because I was different than everybody else. Whether you like me or hate me, you will remember me because I'm different. You cannot call me a Moor. You cannot call me Nation of Islam. You can't call me Kemetic. You can call me Ray. You can call me Jay. Whatever you want to call me, you will remember me because I'm different. Whether you like me or hate me makes no, makes no difference. I stand out in the crowd. These people know me. So 
I did reach out not only to uh, Sonetta, but also the people on his platform. No response. They don't want nothing to do with Angel Snap Nup 7. At the same time, they talk about we need black unity. Well, is Angel Snap Nup 7 black? Is Angel Snap Nup 7 black? You can't even talk to me? You so scared and intimidated and threatened by me? You can't even talk to me. I'm not going to bite you. But what I am representing is so powerful. It's like kryptonite to them. And if they interact with me and the people begin to listen to me, it's going to mess their game up because their game is not about your liberation. Their game is about making money off of you, just like any other church. That's what it's about. Most of these people, well, a lot of these people, including Sarnetta himself, as some of you may or may not know, ex-criminals been in prison, in and out of prison, jails, and then in jail, in prison, they learn about black consciousness. And they become self-made scholars. As you know, I was locked up myself. But I did not smoke, I did not drink, I don't use drugs. I never done none of these things. I was locked up unjustly, I don't have a criminal background. Contrary to popular belief, a lot of these people still carry their criminal mindset. And they have learned that this Pan-African RBG nation, comedic, more stuff, nation, it's a hustle. It's a hustle. So instead of selling drugs and finding me a prostitute, I'm going to hustle. And even Sarnetta, he said it's out of his own mouth. My hustle is black consciousness. He said out of his mouth, your liberation from an oppressor is not a hustle. But for them, it's a hustle. So over the years, I've tried to contact and speak with those on his platform and None of them, none of them except, except a brother called Natra Tahuti. Natra Tahuti, and if you watch my videos, you will see myself with an interview with Natra Tahuti. Out of all those guys, and like I told you, and Natra Tahuti even told me, if you watch the long interview, it might be there, but I know he told me. And I asked Natcha Tahuti, do you know who I am? He said, yeah, we know who you, he said, we know who you are. These people know who I am, all of them. I don't give a damn if I get 10 views, these people know who I am because it's probably them that's watching. Out of the 10 views, it's probably them that's watching. Because I am their only real competition. 
I'm the only one they believe is a threat to them and mess up their hustle. Liberation from an oppressor is not a hustle. Mess up their money. So you will see me with Nacho Tahuti and the poor brother, I don't know exactly what happened, but he's in prison and nobody gives a damn about him no more. I was sending him money and putting on, and the reason why I was supporting Nacho Tahuti was because he was nice to me. He was very courteous, very respectful. See, that's the key. These other suckers are arrogant, think they know it all. If you watch the, the, little, the little talk with myself and Nacho Tahuti, you will see that that man respect what I know. He's not telling me, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. You ignorant, you silly. The man respect me for what I know, even though it's different from what he's talking about. And we get along just fine. When nobody respects you, you cannot get along with somebody who don't respect you. Like I'm stupid, like I'm dumb, like I'm ignorant, like I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Because the only way of thinking is how you think and since and since I depend on you for my thinking, then I gotta come to you to buy DVDs and get other information and tapes and whatever. I want you to think for yourself. Use your brain. Not ain't just snubbing up seven. Cause I can't do it by myself. I already know it. I don't know enough. Not even close. There's no way by myself I could take control of a state and be successful. I don't know enough. It's too much going on. I can help inspire But as far as a lot of the things that we need in order to take control of a state, the different information, I don't know. And I'll be telling you a lie if I made such a statement. It's going to take a lot. It's going to take a lot to be successful in that endeavor. So I don't know if Natcha Tahuti will be able to listen to this broadcast, but much respect to Natcha Tahuti. And I can honestly say that man is your brother. Not one of these know-it-alls. Now, moving forward to this brother Larry, Professor Larry person, he does not come on the uh, Sonata platform like he used to do. I always wanted to challenge this Professor Larry guy because he claims to bring realism. There's only one person on social media among us that keeps it real and brings realism. That's me. So when you got another person that's claiming to be to bring realism, what the hell are you talking about? Not the way you dress, not the way you carry yourself, not the way you talking. What realism you talking about, sir? 
I always wanted to challenge this man. So he messed around. I guess he might not know me by my real name. He accepted my friend request. And I did not bother him. He came to my page when I made posts on my channel and started making comments. And of course, if he brought questionable information, he got challenged. Continuing on this road for 12 miles. He got challenged and he went on about his business because you know that you're going to get your ass whooped. You keep coming. And he don't control my page. So I come on his page. See, he controls his page. And you can be silly on your page. He puts up a post talking about black people have culture. And I told him I disagree. Black people might have a subculture, the so-called Negro in America, we might have a subculture, but we have not developed technically what we call culture because a people who have been enslaved, a slave does not develop culture. The only thing a slave can do is copy what their master gave them. If you are locked up in prison, there is no such thing as prison culture. What the prisoners have done is they have adopted the culture that they know and they bring it to prison. It is a subculture. It is not a real culture. Culture is defined only by a free people in a particular environment and they develop their own education their belief system entertainment societal norms they define what men supposed to do in their society what women supposed to do and children supposed to do in their society their environment dictates their way of life. So if you live by the ocean, chances are you're gonna eat a lot of seafood and things related to the sea. If you live in the desert, your culture is gonna be based upon you living in the desert. A free people. The so-called Negro in America have a subculture or no culture at all because we have been living under races. Slavery was a part of a culture. And we come out of that slavery. Slavery or culture, culture is a way of life. And slavery for the races in America was a way of life. Soul food and everything about us was based upon our lifestyle in American culture. We did not develop it. We responded to culture. The white man created culture. He did not respond. He created his educational system, his belief system, societal norms, the position and the roles of men and women. They created that. You follow him. So how can you say that black people have culture? Now, understand this. Professor Larry agrees with that.
But the reason why he said black folks have culture is because of Africa. And we Africans. So see, that tells us right now that this man does not represent realism because the reality of it is the so-called Negro, the black man in America is not a damn African or an Aboriginal or this other stuff that y'all talking about. Because if you was, you would be practicing that culture, but you're not. You are living the life of the Negro. And that's all you know. You're not living the life and you have not practiced the culture of nobody in Ghana or the Congo or, Li or even Liberia or anywhere. When you look at Larry, you see a Negro. You do not see somebody from Africa or the islands or anywhere. He talks like a Negro, walks like a Negro. If it quacks like a duck, walks like a duck, it is a duck. You ain't no damn African. You got all these people claiming to be Aboriginal. All these people claiming to be Africans. They walk like a Negro, talk like a Negro. They eat like a Negro. Everything about them is like the American so-called Negro. The only culture you know. If that was your culture, you would have been born in it. Your mama wasn't born in it. Now, I'm not talking about nobody's mama. So don't go there. Don't be talking about my mama. Your mother wasn't born in it. Your father, grandfather, your great-great-grandparents for generations. But all of a sudden, you learn black conscience and now you got culture. That's not how it works. That's not how culture works. Culture is a lifestyle. And that's not your lifestyle. You don't eat no African food. You don't pray to no African gods. You don't educate your children like they do the people on the continent or how the aboriginal taught their children. You are not them. You have no culture, you are a slave. And that's the problem. That's the real problem. They don't want to be associated with slavery. You was locked up in jail. You was locked up in prison. That's your history, that's what you are. Larry, Sarnetta, even myself, that's part of our history. That's us. Trying to hide it, trying to ignore it is not going to change nothing. That's what we are. We come out of slavery. That's where we come from. No more than you can change who your parents are. Your parent, One of your parents is a crackhead. The other is a drunk. You don't have to claim them. You don't have to socialize with them. They steal your parents and that's where you come from. You are the child of a drunk and you are the child of a crackhead. Do you have to be a crackhead? No. Do you have to be a drunk? No. Do you have to be a slave? No. That's where we come from. I'm not ashamed of it. I just talked to my auntie and I thought I was born in a town. Don't you know? She told me I was born on a plantation just like a slave. I thought it was a small town. She said, no, that's a plantation. I'm like, wow. I was the son of sharecroppers. Sharecropping is nothing but a form of slavery. Many 
of us have that background. Our parents, great grandparents were sharecroppers in the South. And then we end up migrating to the North. Or the West or whatever. So Professor Larry does not agree with me. And I thought I thought Professor Larry was a realist. I assume Professor Larry has some type of knowledge and understanding. So correct me, sir. Professor Larry brought no correction. He brought nothing, y'all. The only thing that do, well, excuse me, I'm not, I'm not gonna call him a dude because I don't like being called dude either. But he's disrespectful also. Start calling me all out my name, call me a troll, a uh, 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 prey, a uh, 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 celebrity seeker, or popularity seeker, some old crap he was t talking about because he couldn't defend his position. You have no connection to another culture, sir. That's the first thing. In order for you to claim culture, you got to show your connection to that culture. And you can't. You cannot show your connection or your contribution to their history. The people on the continent of Africa do not teach black history. They do not teach it because we have no contribution to their history. So they do not intertwine because we are not them. And they know this. You don't. You are shame coming from a slave background. In a quarter mile, keep to the left on I-255 East. So you want to adopt African accomplishments as your own. And you didn't have nothing to do with that. You didn't even exist. Continue on this road for 20 miles. You didn't even exist when Kemet was here. Didn't even exist. But you want to claim Kemet and you did not exist when the Moors was here. You did not exist. Even so, how does that help you? If my mother is a millionaire and I only have $5 in my pocket, but none of that money comes to me, just because my mother is a millionaire, how does that help me? I still got $5 in my pocket. Whatever Africa done in the past, in one mile, take exit how does that help us? It don't help you at all. Matter of fact, it's not even helping them. Those people over there are corrupt. Those people over there are influenced by Europeans. Those people over there are just messed up. Matter of fact, they might even be worse than us. So I don't know why you foaming at the mouth, wanting their culture. I heard, I heard they are bleaching their skin. They're where they Africans are wearing weaves. They are bleaching their skin and doing all kinds of crazy stuff now. So what make them special? I can do bad by myself. You wanna brag about what Africa used to do. Nobody give a damn about what you used to do. If you cripple in a wheelchair now, you talk about, well, I used to play football, you in a wheelchair now. Nobody care about what you used to do. You can't play football now. You in a wheelchair. How does what you used to do help you right now? You in a wheelchair never to walk again. It don't help you. 
So this man, who's supposed to represent realism, the only thing he could do is post memes. Hey, how you doing there, Sister Rashida? The world's first dark-skinned activist. The only thing Professor Larry can do is try to make mockery of me and post memes and other silly stuff. He didn't make no attempt to prove that black folks have culture. Hey, what's up there, legend? You trying to claim culture that, that don't have nothing to do with you. Nothing. You have to show your connection and your contribution to that culture, and you cannot do it. It has nothing to do with you. The only way you can have culture, you must be a free people, independent, and you determine your destiny. The peck of wood control your destiny. Right now, he can turn off your internet. Right now, he can cut off your water. Right now, he can cut off your food supply. Is that part of your damn culture? Huh? Like Eric Muhammad said, talk black to me. Is that what your culture produced? Dependence? If it wasn't for the white man, you couldn't even get a drink of water in your culture, sir. That's a fact. You don't make your own clothes, lipstick, underwear. You don't do nothing for yourself. Toilet paper. You don't do nothing in your culture. So I don't want nothing to do with your culture anyway, sir. Your culture represents one of confusion. Your culture represents that of dependence upon somebody else. Either you're gonna depend on the white man or Caucasian man, or you're gonna depend on some African. You are, your culture is that of a child. So I don't want nothing to do with your culture anyway, sir. You gotta copy plagiarize other people. You gotta depend on others. Slave culture. You don't want to be associated with slavery, but that's how you live it. Even in the culture that you talk about, you are a slave. I would rather say I don't have a culture because the culture these people represent is really embarrassing when you start breaking it down. I expected more from Professor Larry. If you use the title professor, you expect somebody that has some real scholarship. I'm a professor. I'm a doctor. And then, when they come to you like this, it's a real disappointment. I am not a troublemaker. I'm not a know-it-all. I'm seeking the real the truth. And I'm gonna stand on that. I'm not interested in what make me feel good. There's a lot of stuff that make me feel good. I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in that which is beneficial for us as a group or a people that can liberate us from an oppressor once and for all. 
all this talk and all this feel good waiting for Jesus to return rhetoric, I'm not impressed. You need real change. But see, some of us, we want to change, but we don't want to change. You want to stay a Negro. We might as well stay where we are if the only thing you're going to do in your liberation is to keep acting like a Negro the way we act day in and day out. Selfish, arrogant, profane, nasty, nothing but a chocolate-covered version of our slave masters and their children. Might as well stay where we are. And that's the reason why nothing has changed because that's the mindset that you really have. You are chocolate-covered European. And you can holler black power and black first and RBG nation. That's all you are. You're nothing but a chocolate-covered version of racist. And when you talk, that's what you sound like. You sound like white folks. Because that's all you know. And those Africans, they was conquered by Europeans. When you hear, hear them talk, they sound just like Europeans. But just like I heard a brother say, it's about righteousness. I'm not pro-black, I'm pro-righteous. And that's what it's really about. Righteousness. I did not say religion. I said it's about righteousness. I don't need God to treat you right. My sister Rashida is in the chat room and her sister Rashida called me and told me that her and her daughter was having problems and they need something to eat. I don't need God to tell me if I got If I got the means to help my sister, I don't need God to tell me that. Matter of fact, I don't have to have an overflow of resources. I can share what I got. I got $10, I can share $2 or $3 with my sister. I don't need God in my life to treat people right. I don't need God to tell me there's a poor dog on the street looking for food, minding its own business. I don't need God to tell me don't pick up that rock and throw a rock at the poor dog. I don't need, if you need that kind of help, you are in real, real bad shape. You have no kind of conscience you are in real, real bad shape. Somebody told me if it wasn't for God in their life, they probably commit a murder. Still, you are in bad, bad shape. No, that's something that you want to do anyway. You don't need a belief in God to tell you you shouldn't murder. You shouldn't steal. You're supposed to have some kind of conscience. Even animals. And you said animals don't have a soul. So you know they don't have a belief in God. Even animals, when you watch animals, they have a sense of right and wrong. So I'm very disappointed in this self-anointed professor because just like my sister Rashida, I welcome debate. I welcome the challenge. I welcome it. It's like a steel, steel sharpened steel. 
you can make me better and I can make you better. But we live in an environment of people looking for slaves. It's my way or the highway. They don't have respect for other people of intelligence. Natcha Tahuti was part of that group, but he was different than the rest of those guys. He respect other people for what they know. But the majority of folks on YouTube, because they never been nothing in their life, they want praise, of course they want money, they want you to look up to them like they special. Look at what I know. I'm Professor Larry. I'm smarter than you. I read all these books. I got all this information. But then you come to me and the only thing you can do is call somebody a troll and post silly pictures with all your professorship all your scholarship. That's why I keep telling you all this blackity black stuff, black scholarship and pan-Africanism, all that stuff is a joke. It's a joke. That was fine and dandy When we, was a, when we was at a lower stage of development, it no longer flies no more. You are, you are maturing and you should expect more. Just like children. As children grow up, they expect more from their parents. You can't satisfy them with a lollipop no more. They want $200 Jordan shoes now. They expect more from mom and daddy now because they're growing up. But those still stuck in the past, those who still stuck, who have yet to mature, you can still, still satisfy them with crap that you should have learned in the kindergarten. I'm not angry at Professor Larry. I'm really disappointed because I thought, I assume, because he said that he represents realism, I thought for sure I would get more of a uh, challenge, more of a debate out of him. But He's influenced by all that blackity black stuff, pan African, whatever. So, you know, loser, loser doctrine. A bunch of talk, and they, they never produce nothing. Two thousand and ten to to two thousand and twenty. You can put, put Tariq Nasheed, Louis Farrakhan, Sarnetta TV, Sarah Sunseti, and Pharaoh. Put all these people together. Between 2010 and 2020, what, what did they accomplish? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And y'all still want to be pathetic losers. Well, keep doing it. Keep being a loser. It's fine with me. But don't get angry at me because I remind you and show you that you're a pathetic loser. That's what you want. You don't want to do nothing different. You are satisfied with the results you are getting. The reason why I talk is because I'm not satisfied with being a loser. I'm not satisfied with the results that we're getting. You got, you got to try something different. You got to think different. You got to be different.
again, I'm, 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 I'm disappointed. I'm di disappointed in all these people. You got so much, you have so much wisdom and supreme knowledge and understanding. I do not disrespect nobody. I don't call people names. I stick to the topic. I don't call people trolls. I want the right information. See, they think they know it all already. And you can't teach a know-it-all nothing. I already know. You can't teach me nothing. But what is it doing for you? It's not producing nothing except feel-good rhetoric. Selling false hopes and dreams. And if you're satisfied with that, if that's acceptable to you, so be it. It's not acceptable to me. And it should not be acceptable by us. And I'm going to raise my voice and tell people we should not accept this. It's a better way. You got to change. We got to do things different. On that note, thank you for listening. I took a 20 minute video, made an hour out of it. <laughs> Never fails. Peace to everybody, including black conscious, pro-black, whatever. They just don't, just don't know no better. That's all. I'm sorry. No disrespect. You just don't. You caught up in, in fantasy and fairy tale. You just don't don't know no better. Twenty years from now, they're gonna be saying and doing the same thing. I guarantee it. Is that what you want? Twenty years from now is enough to have a baby and raise that child to adulthood. You're gonna have nothing. This should not be acceptable. If black conscience, pan-Africanism, nation of Islam, if they were actual businesses, they would have went out of business a long time ago. Because they're not profitable. The CEOs, the leadership, would have been fired a long time ago. Because when you're in business, you are in business to make a profit. And black mechanism, all this blackness stuff, is not making a profit for you. You're giving all your millions of dollars. And you're not getting nothing in return. Except talk. In the real business world, that would not be acceptable. So why is it acceptable to you? Religion and spirituality got your mind on Cause your God is invisible. Your God is nothing to be seen except success that you cannot see. You accept success that you cannot touch the same way as your God. You cannot touch your God. You cannot see your God. Oh, wow. Like Michael Jackson said, you know, it's, it's time for a change. It's time to make a change. On that note, let me get out of here. I catch y'all on the flip. Thank you, Sister Rashida and Legend and Pyramid and all those in the chat room and those who are listening and those who will be listening later on in the, in the, in the future. Peace to the black community. 
soul community. Thank you, Facebook. Thank you, YouTube, for allowing me to use your platform. Again, I don't mean any harm, but we got to do better. We got to do better. We got to do better. I will be dead in a little while. I don't know how long I got. I will be dead. I'm trying to tell you, for your own good, those of you who will still be alive, you're gonna have to change how you're doing things. Because the way you, the things that, the how you're thinking and what you're doing now is not gonna fly. It's not. You're gonna thank me one day for warning you and telling you to change your direction. You're gonna thank me. Of course, I won't be able to hear your thanks because I'll be dead and gone. Never to be seen again. I'm not going to no afterlife. I'm not going to the hereafter. I'm going to the damn dirt where I come from. I'm going back to the water. I'm going back to this damn planet. I'm not going to planet X. I'm going back to nothing like the nothing I was before I got here. Heed the warning. Keep it real. And if you're living, it's time for you to live. I'm out of here, y'all. Peace.